All right, we're going to do our first look at section 5.1 here, and we're basically going to look at the idea of eigenvectors and eigenvalues and focus on an example, just try to motivate why we're going to do some of the things we're doing. So idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors are kind of a strange thing, and it's not clear why we'd want to do this. So I'll state the goals. This is going to be for the whole uh, section, and you should be able to accomplish these after the uh, next set of videos, not after this one. I'll define eigenvectors and eigenvalues, and then I'm going to focus on a single example. So by the end of all this, all this whole section, you should be able to take a matrix and figure out what the eigenvectors and eigenvalues are. Uh, if you're given an eigenvector and an eigenvalue, you should be able to confirm that, and you should be able to figure out how to find the eigenspace of a matrix that you're given. So here's the definition. This is straight out of the book. Um, if you you're given a matrix A, and what's important is that A is an n by n matrix. So this only is going to work for a square matrix. So if you take A times V, and you get V back, only you've stretched it or compressed it a little bit, that vector V is then called an eigenvector, and it's associated with this matrix A. This number, this scalar, about how much you stretch or shrink it, that's called the eigenvalue. So an eigenvalue satisfies this relationship. What's important here is if you take a matrix times the vector, the result is in the same direction. It's just that the vector is either stretched or compressed somehow. Right? And that amount of compression is, is lambda, and V is the direction that we're focused on. So that's kind of a weird idea. And it's not really clear what that even means. So let's look at how we're going to use this before we talk about how we find it. Suppose we have a situation where we, we have a small town with two groceries. Okay. The first grocery store we'll call X, the second we'll call Y. And let's suppose that some proportion of the people in town use this first grocery store and some proportion of people in the this town use the second grocery store. And what's going to happen is that as you go from week to week, some group, of, whoever's going to grocery store A, they're going to want to continue to stay at going to A, but some percentage is going to go to grocery store Y for next week for whatever reason. Likewise, the people who are going to grocery store Y, some percentage is going to want to stay there, and then some proportion is going to want to go to the other grocery store next week. So if we have some state, x, the state is given by the proportion of people going to the first grocery store and the proportion of people going to the second grocery store. And next week, oops, next week, we want to know what's going on there in terms of this current week. So let's call this x naught, and this will be x naught. All right, so this is our state. So in particular, let's look at a uh, particular example. Suppose that 80% of the people using the grocery store x, the first grocery store, are going to use it again next week. That means 20% of the people next week are going to go to the second grocery store. Okay. At the same time, the people who are focused on going to the second grocery store, 70% of those people will, will go to that same grocery store next week. So therefore, 30% are going to go to the grocery store, the other grocery store, next week. So what do we have? We have our state, x, which is given by uh, some proportion to go to the first grocery store, some proportion to go to the second grocery store, and we're going to call this x naught. And then x1, what's going to happen is that 80% of the people going there this week will go there next, go to the same grocery store next week, but of the people who go to the second grocery store, 20, oops, sorry. 30% are going to want to go to the first grocery store. And so now what do we have? We're going to have, of the people going to the second grocery store, 
was it 70 percent are going to want to continue going to the second grocery store but 30 percent are going to want to go to the other one right so the, th the thing we want to do then is when we want to figure out what's going to go for the second week the third week the fourth week and we want to know is what's going to be the pattern if we do this for many 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 weeks what's going to happen in terms of the proportion of people going to each grocery store so what do we have we have some current state we're calling x naught and then we have some state x1 which is what's happening next week and here's the thing to notice is that this is a linear transformation so this is saying if I have my current state for the previous week, 80% of the first group plus 30% of the second group is going to go to the first grocery store. For the second grocery store, 20% of those uh, going to the first grocery store are going to want to switch, and 70% are going to want to stay. So we can now write this in terms of, so again, this is our x naught, this is our x1, this is some matrix A, and this is going to be A times x naught. So this means that if I give, if I know my current proportion of people going to the store, what's going to happen next week is just going to be A times whatever's happening that previous week. Likewise, so again, this is our x naught. This is our x1. x1 is a times x0. What happens in the second week is going to be a times x1. But x1 is a times x naught. So this is going to be a squared times the original thing. So this is going to this is my a squared and this is the original distribution. And now if I go to the third week, third week is going to be a times x2. So this updates whatever it was from the previous week. But what was x2? x2 was x squared times x naught squared. So this is going to give me a cubed x naught. And this basically just keeps going. So this is my original. This is the first week second week, the third week, the fourth week is going to be a to the fourth times the original, the fifth week is going to be a to the fifth times the original, and I just keep going uh, on and on and on. Now, here's the thing to notice. Suppose I have this vector, we'll call this v1 and we're going to call this v2. Something special is going to happen here with this v1. If I multiply this out, I'm going to have 0.8 times 3 is 2.4, plus 0.3 times 2 is 0.6, and then 0.2 times 3 is going to be 0.6, and then 0.7 times 2 is going to be 1.4, and lo and behold, I get the exact same thing, come back out. So a times v1 is going to be v1. And I'm going to be pedantic and write this as 1 times v1. What happens here? It's going to be 0.8 times 1 minus 0.3 times 1. It's going to be 0.2 times 1 minus 0.7 times 1. This is going to be 0.5 and minus 0.5. If I factor out a one half, I'm going to make that a one half. I'm going to get one minus one. And notice this is the original v2. So a v2 equals one half of v2. Right? So if I take this matrix times this vector, I get one times the original vector. I take this matrix times this vector, I get one half of the original vector. So this is going to be what we're going to call an eigenvector. And I have a v1 
equals 1 times v1. So the eigenvalue is 1. And here, if I take a times this vector, I'm going to get 1 half times the original thing. So this is a v2 equals 1 half of v2. So the eigenvalue is 1 half, and the eigenvector is 1 minus 1. And here's the thing to notice is now, suppose I have any initial distribution. Okay, let's say it's a, b. So we initially suppose a people or a percentage of the people are using the first grocery store, b are using the second grocery store. I want to know, can I write this as something times v1 plus something times v2. And if I write this, so this is a vector equation, and I can write the equivalent matrix equation like that. So that gives me the linear combination of these two column vectors. If I want to solve this, what am I going to do? I could put this in a uh, augmented matrix and solve this. But here's what all I really care is, uh, is there going to be a solution that exists? And I want it to be unique because uh, I've got two dimensions here, and I want these two things to form a basis. So because there's two, and I want to form a basis, because I'm now working in R2, then I need these things to be linearly independent, which means that if they're linearly independent, I have two vectors. This matrix must be invertible. And so if I take the determinant of that matrix, and it's not zero, that means a solution exists and these two things form a basis. And I can take any vector in R2 and I can write it as a combination of 3, 2, and 1, minus 1. So let's see, this is going to be 3 times minus 1, minus 1 times 2, so minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. <coughs> so today minus 5 is not 0. So that means I can take any vector, AB, and I can write it as a linear combination of 3, 2, and 1, minus 1. So these eigenvectors form a basis for R2. So I can take any vector. So if you give me any initial state, I can write it as a combination of 3, 2, and 1, minus 1. So what? So let's assume we have some initial distribution of people using grocery store 1 and grocery store 2. I can write this as something times 3, 2 plus something times 1 minus 1. And I know, so this is my v1. I know a v1 is 1 times v1. This is my v2. I know that a v2 is 1 half of v2. So I have this. What is x1? x1 is going to be a times x0, but x0 is going to be, oops, some x times 3, 2 plus y times y minus 1. And if I multiply that through, this is a scalar number, that's a scalar number. I get a times 3, 2 plus y times a 1 minus 1. And here I already know that a times that is just going to be 1 times 3, 2. a times 1 minus 1 is going to be 1 half of 1 minus 1. Okay, that's fine. What happens in the second week? Second week I'm going to have a times x1. So that's going to be a times this result. I 
multiply that through, I get, again, this is a scalar, so I can pull it out. This is a scalar, 1 half y. So I get that. a times 3, 2 is just 3, 2, because it's 1 times that. So that does not change. a times 1 minus 1 is 1 half of 1 minus 1. So I have 1 half here times 1 half. like so. What's going to happen in the third week? In the third week, what do I have? I'm going to have a times x2. So x2 is this thing now. So I just rewrite that. I'm going to multiply that a through. Again, this is a scalar. It's going to be a times 1 minus 1. Oops, this should be a times that, so I got ahead of myself. So this is x times a, 3, 2. a times the vector 3, 2 is just 3, 2. I know that from here. a times 1 minus 1 is 1 half of a 1 half of 1 minus 1 so this becomes 1 half cubed and I can just keep doing this over and over and over again in the nth week what am I going to have? I'm going to have x times 3, 2 from here plus y and this 1 half gets multiplied every time And then it's going to be times this 1 minus 1. So what happens? If n goes from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I keep cutting it in half every time. This thing right here, oops, that is going to get closer and closer and closer to 0. So what I end up with is I'm basically just going to be left with that. So the xn is going to get closer and closer and closer to x times 3, 2. So this basically says eventually what's going to happen in this town is 3 out of 5 people are going to go to the first um, grocery store and 2 out of 5 people are going to be ending up going to the second grocery store and you can get your long run distribution assuming these probabilities don't change in time. So knowing these eigenvalues and these eigenvectors gives us a key insight into what to expect and how to look at these kind of mathematical models. All right, thank you.